Hello, in this video, I'm going to talk about quantitative research designs. Um, so this is not at all an exhaustive list of different types of quantitative designs, but I'm just going to present a few uh, kind of key uh, types of quantitative designs here. Uh, so starting with correlational design. Um, so if we're trying to find out if variables are correlated, what that means is we're trying to determine if there's a relationship between two or more variables. Now that does not mean that one variable caused another. It simply means that they're related. There's some kind of relationship so that uh, maybe two things tend to happen at the same time or two things tend not to happen at the same time. Uh, those would be correlations. Um, so describing the relationship between variables, uh, but in many types of research designs, including correlational design, we can't necessarily determine cause and effect. So we couldn't say that variable A caused variable B. We might be able to say that they're correlated, and maybe we suspect that variable A caused variable B, but it might require a different type of design to be able to determine that causative cause and effect relationship. And that's the difference between correlation and causation. So correlation, just these things tend to happen together, and causation, this thing causes this other thing. So two very separate, different ideas, um, and they tend to be confused a lot when people are interpreting the results of research. Um, a lot of people who maybe are reading the results of research and don't know better might see what is really a correlation and assume that there's causation and that's not correct. Um, so in a correlational design, we're looking for correlation, not causation. Um, and using statistical methods, we can find what's called the correlation coefficient. And that's a number to represent how much correlation there is between two or more variables. So a higher correlation coefficient means that there's more correlation, there's a stronger relationship um, so these things are very likely to happen together or a lower correlation coefficient would mean that there's not a relationship or a weaker relationship and these things are not very likely to happen together. All right, a causal comparative research design is also referred to as ex post facto research because the research is done after the event you're studying has already occurred. Um, so you're looking back at something that has already happened to see if you can find a relationship between the variables. And in this type of research design, you might be able to determine a cause and effect relationship, which is why it's called a causal comparative research design. Um, so you still might simply observe correlation rather than causation. Uh, but in this type of design, you're more likely, it's more possible that you will observe a cause effect a causal relationship. All right, in survey research, uh, you are administering a survey to your group of participants. Um, so you're asking questions from the participants and you're putting all those answers together to find scores. Um, so you're scoring each item to find kind of what the average responses were for each item. Um, surveys can include quantitative data qualitative data or both. I shouldn't say include, they can collect quantitative, qualitative, or both. Uh, so quantitative questions on a survey would be anything that puts your, the answers into categories. So it could be like a multiple choice question where you're asking level of education and they only have five options. Um, or it could be that you're asking um, I don't know, color preference, and maybe you give them 10 questions. So any kind of question where there's a limited number of choices and they're choosing one of the available choices, that is a quantitative question. Um, or anything where you're collecting any sort of numerical data or data that you can categorize and code so that it becomes numerical, that is quantitative. 
Um, but then you can also ask open-ended questions on surveys where you're asking a question and giving the participant the opportunity to explain further or give thoughts and feelings and, and to tell more of a story in answer to the question. So in that case, there's infinite possibilities in how they might respond as opposed to maybe here are your five choices, which do you choose? So a survey could include maybe mostly quantitative questions with a few qualitative to help explain some of the quantitative questions. And if that's the case, then that would be a mixed methodology design because you're using a survey that includes both types of questions, or it could be all quantitative or all qualitative. Uh, so surveys are nice because you have the opportunity to gather data, gather information from many, many people far and wide very quickly compared to other types of methodology. Uh, so surveys are administered either via questionnaire or interview. Uh, so if it's a questionnaire, that means that the participant is reading the questions and answering themselves either on paper, physically in person, or they can answer on an electronic survey that maybe was emailed to them or administered in some other way electronically. Compared to an interview where the researcher is guided by the survey questions, so the researcher is reading the survey questions as they talk with the participant, and so they're sort of verbally collecting their answers to the questions. Um, very often, um, an interview would be um, recorded. Of course, you'd get consent from the participant to allow you to do that. You might record it and, and document their choices later, or you might simply fill out the questionnaire on their behalf as you read through. Um, so whether you want to do a questionnaire where the person is reading it themselves or an interview, really depends on the nature of your study and especially the participants that you plan to work with. Uh, so with some groups, doing a questionnaire on paper or on the computer or on their phone um, might work really well, but with other groups, it might be easier and they might understand the questions better if you're personally communicating it to them verbally. Um, so depending on your population and maybe their uh, level of communication, maybe their familiarity or comfortability with electronic devices and things like that, uh, you might choose one method over another. Um, also, interviewing can be useful if you want to do a mixed methods approach, uh, because when you're interviewing, you have the opportunity, rather than sticking with exactly what it says on the survey, you can begin with those questions and then build from there. And that would be the qualitative component is that you can offer more clarification about questions, you can ask follow-up questions, you can observe body language and other behaviors during the interview, depending on what it is that you're actually trying to study. Um, so interviewing can be really useful if you want to start with the quantitative questions that you might build into your questionnaire, into your survey, uh, but then build from there with more qualitative components. All right, and then finally, experimental research. This is really the gold standard of quantitative research. Uh, it's considered to provide the soundest evidence, so it's the most reliable um, scientifically validated evidence. Um, so in this case, you're taking a hypothesis and you're working with that hypothesis to predict whether there's a relationship between variables and you're testing it by randomly selecting participants and uh, putting them in different groups. So you'd have a control group and at least one, maybe more experimental groups that are receiving whatever the condition is or different conditions. Um, meaning some kind of intervention of, of some kind. Um, and so you're putting the, the participants into these different groups and testing uh, whether your hypothesis is correct, <laughs> essentially. Um, so you're measuring the effects of each of the experimental conditions and comparing them against the control group. Um, and then you would use uh, statistical methods to determine whether the differences between those, uh, the effects that you find in the experimental groups are statistically significant or very different or meaningful uh, compared to the control group. 
Um, so experimental research requires more time and resources. And depending on what it is that you're trying to um, study, sometimes it's very difficult, if not maybe impossible, uh, to make an experimental research study about certain things that you're trying to test. So it depends on what the hypothesis that what the hypothesis is that you're trying to test and what the topic is that you're trying to learn about, um, because some things will be more conducive to this type of research design than others. But anytime um, your topic can be explored using experimental research, that is the gold standard and the best way uh, to provide the soundest evidence possible for your topic. All right, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.